DNA is genetic material, as you know. And we've been talking a lot about um, DNA in this unit. We're going to continue doing so. And I think it's important that you understand three basic things about genetic material. Um, the first is that genetic material reproduces accurately. And that's something that's necessary for life. That's what we were looking at with DNA replication and looking at how that complementary base pairing allows for semi-conservative replication of the DNA before cell division. The second condition is that all genetic material expresses information. And that's what we're going to start looking at. Um, and DNA expresses information by making proteins. So we're going to start looking at protein synthesis. And then the third thing is that DNA mutates infrequently. That's very important because mutations will change characteristics um, of organisms, might change the information that's expressed, and it works out well that the accurate reproduction of DNA re basically ends up with infrequent mutations. So we're, in order to understand how DNA expresses information, we need to understand more about the other type of nucleic acid that we find in living organisms, RNA, or ribonucleic acid. This image shows DNA and RNA side by side, and I want you to take a moment and see if you can notice some differences between DNA and RNA. This would be a good time to pause the video and look at these two options. Hopefully you've noticed a couple of things right now. First of all, DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, is made up of one two strands, the complementary strands of DNA, making it a double helix. RNA, as we can see, is single-stranded. Um, then you might be looking at the bases, the nitrogen bases, you know, cytosine, cytosine, guanine, guanine, adenine, adenine, thymine. Here's another difference, uracil. So those are two of the differences. Let's look at these a little bit differently and find the other third major difference. All right, so we've already noticed that DNA is double-stranded, right? It's a double helix, whereas RNA is single-stranded. That's important because in RNA, there's always um, nitrogen bases that are exposed, unlike in DNA, where they have those complementary pairs. Second difference is in DNA, we have thymine, but in RNA, instead, we have uracil. The chemical structure of these two nitrogen bases is extremely similar. So whereas in DNA, thymine matches up with adenine, in RNA, uracil and adenine are complementary. That will be important when we get to our next video. Now our third difference, which we couldn't see in that last um, image, is the sugar. So remember, DNA has a five-carbon sugar, deoxyribose. RNA, the sugar, still made up of five carbons, but it actually has an extra oxygen in it, so it's ribose. So DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, right? So our sugar is deoxyribose. And then RNA, the sugar is ribose. Those are the three major differences between DNA and RNA. And now we'll look at a few different types of RNA. The three types of RNA that we are going to be talking about this year in biology are mRNA, tRNA, and rRNA. Now the M for mRNA stands for messenger. And this type of RNA, as we can see here, is linear. So it's just a long chain of those ribonucleotides all connected together. And they are a messenger. They bring a message from one place to another. The second type is tRNA or transfer RNA. And as we can see, the transfer RNA is has like a clover leaf shape. It has these little bobbles here on the end. And the transfer RNA, its job is to transfer, to carry um, the building blocks of proteins, amino acids. The third type of RNA is ribosomal. So ribosomal RNA we don't talk about too much other than know that it exists and it is an important part of, you guessed it, ribosomes. What we're going to be getting into now is protein synthesis. And protein synthesis is made up of two separate processes that really work together. The first, which occurs in the nucleus, is called transcription. 
And then the second, which includes, in, it co- happens in the cytoplasm, and also at the ribosomes, so this is down here, the cell, is translation. What happens is during transcription, that DNA message is passed on to um, mRNA. And so that's transcription. And then during translation, the messenger RNA is used to make a protein, okay, or an amino, a long chain of amino acids. So make sure you have in your notes that going from DNA to mRNA, that's transcription. And then when we go from the mRNA to the protein, that's translation. And that is going to be our focus now.